to Dr. Rasha, if you can <laughs> summarize the answer of, uh, you know, uh, that what are the roles of the different stakeholders in preparing the TVET labor market for the green transformation briefly, please. Thank you very much. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Now we can. Sorry. Now, just before answering this question, I, I want just to uh, highlight a very important uh, piece of information that, according to also ILO statistics, uh, less than 40% of the nationally determined commitments, the NDCs uh, of countries, mm -hmm. include plans for skills training. Okay. Now, this is very alarming because. Mm -hmm. um, the implementation of these NDCs would rely heavily on qualified labor force. Mm -hmm. So if countries do not have strategies to upskill uh, the labor force, it means that they will not be able to actually implement those NDCs. Now for the different stakeholders, uh, there should be, there is a role for each stakeholder, mm -hmm. the government, the private sector, the yes. society, mm -hmm. uh, and they should all collaborate actually to uh, design and implement a strategy for human resource development. Um, these, this strategy should include measures for vocational training mm -hmm. and reskilling, and also introducing new specializations that uh, are required for the green transformation. Okay. An important also point to uh, uh, put in mind is that the green skills development uh, should be integrated into the policy, the general policy for skills development. It should not be um, seen as an additional set of skills. So for instance, uh, in addition to giving the students and the trainees um, increasing their awareness about the environment, about the sustainable development, they should also be trained on core skills, okay. such as innovation skills, uh, problem solving skills, decision making skills, mm. and communication skills. Mm. And of course, we have to train the teachers on how to, um, on those skills and how to transfer them to, to the students. Yeah. Um, on the, on the employer side and the private sector, they should also have a plan for upskilling uh, the skills of their uh, workforce and working with the government on the general strategy for human resources. And here it is important to uh, highlight the role of the sector skills councils that were discussed yesterday, because these sector skills councils will be uh, they will be responsible for identifying and forecasting the new skills and occupational standards for the green transformation. Uh, now, it's very important that all stakeholders, as I said, work together, the government, the employers, and the private sector. And the main objective should be to capitalize on the resources and expertise uh, of all the stakeholders so that they can jointly identify and, and analyze the skill needs um, and implement the grid upon strategy. Just one um, yes. last point about what USAID is doing in this area. Yes. Um, now, USAID has been working in the Tibet sector for more than 10 years. Mm -hmm. And throughout those 10 years, we have lessons learned on what reforms should be uh, implemented. And we gathered all of these reforms in what we call now the uh, International Applied Technology Schools which are schools that operate according to international standards. We are establishing 10 of them. We're introducing totally new specializations like yes. artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. marketing for uh, financial services, modern trade, e-commerce, um, facility management. And uh, these schools will uh, have international accreditation. Uh, it's competency-based school, not just curriculum. And there will be green schools, mm -hmm. meaning that they have sustainable buildings that rely on solar energy uh, generation, the use of uh, CO2 filters, conservation of water and electricity through uh, sensors. And in addition to that, the students would be um, given extracurricular activities to improve their awareness about the environment and the green transformation. Thank you very much, Dr. Rasha.